Good morning, my name is Richard Eaton, and in addition to it being Youth Sunday, it also we are celebrating Laity Sunday. That means all of us that are lay people can celebrate a little bit. I just happen to be your lay leader and in giving the message today. Fear knocked at the door. Faith answered. No one was there. Fear knocked at the door. Faith answered. No one was there. That's really the message of the two scriptures that we have today. The first one being from the Psalm of uh, the 34th Psalm, where it talks about David. David was a mighty warrior who uh, had been captured, and he had been brought in front of the king, who happened to be the king of Gad, who was also there. That's also the area where from which Ga uh, Goliath came. But David was standing uh, in, in the midst of trial for himself because he didn't know whether they were going to cut off an ear, cut off his nose, or slash his throat. So he knew he was in a lot of trouble, and he knew God's nearness and salvation was also close by. So he had the inspiration to fake his madness, and so he scratched at the doors and at the gates uh, continuously. And then he allowed spit and saliva to run down his beard so that when he was finally brought to, in front of the king, the king determined that he was mad, that he was insane. They, he couldn't have committed the kinds of uh, acts that he had been accused of. So he was released. And then David later wrote that Psalm 34, and he wrote, and two things out there uh, were brought to my attention. He said, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. And that's what David wrote in the 34th Psalm. Then we have the Gospel of Mark, who is the story of the blind man named Bartimaeus. That Jesus was getting ready to leave Jericho at this time and go on to Jerusalem. When he was leaving the city, uh, obviously crowds gathered around him and they accompanied him and they were noisy. And at the end of the gate, uh, just before you leave Jericho, there sat uh, Bartimaeus down uh, alongside the, the road where he sat all, every day um, with his cloak that he had taken off and to catch whatever he might be able to catch, like a few coins or something, but begging. He was a beggar, and he would sit there and beg and also live within his realm of hopelessness and probably woe is me. When he heard all the turmoil and the excitement, he then uh, he stopped and wondered what it was, and he found out that it was Jesus coming down the roadside. So he yelled out, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And those around him tried to shush him and tell him to be quiet, that Jesus didn't need to hear from him. But that didn't stop him. As the noise got a little louder, he yelled even louder. And he said, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And Jesus stopped because he heard him. And Jesus called to him and said, come to me. And they all said, cheer up. Jesus is calling you. So he went to Jesus. Jesus laid his hand on his shoulder and said, what do you want me to do for you today? And he said, teacher, or, which meant rabbi, I want to see again. Jesus said, your faith has saved you. Off you go. Jesus knew that Bartimaeus was a man of faith because he used the word David, called him son of David. So he knew that he had uh, his lineage uh, as a part of his understanding of who Jesus really was. So his sight was restored 
and he could see again. Bartimaeus then walked with Jesus and followed him on his way to Jerusalem. Why follow Jesus? It was for salvation, for mercy and for pardon, and also to know love. Love of life, to love God, and to know the kingdom of God. Because Jesus did say to his disciples on the Sermon on the Mount, happy are the poor in spirit, which meant the humble. Happy are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Happy are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. And happy are the pure in spirit, for they shall see God. Both scriptures give praise for the faith of God. David called on God. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and he delivered me from all my fears. And Bartimaeus called on Jesus, and Jesus said, Your faith has saved you. Your faith has given you new sight. Now, all of us are confronted by fears that appear to us in strange ways, strange disguises, and some of our fears are so difficult that they challenge whether we want to continue living, uh, living our lives that way that we have known. And when I say that I'm talking about those severe health issues, maybe a death of a loved one, loss of love, or even our own personal death. Sigmund Freud, he, he divided fears into two categories. One was normal, the other was abnormal. Now I have trouble with those words, but for the sake of this point right now, let's think of uh, the normal and the abnormal fears according to uh, Sigmund Freud. He said that the normal fears are those that protect us and motivate us. The abnormal fears are those that paralyze us and cause us mental anguish. And he used the example of the snake. Those of you that have studied him, I think he said something like, if you are traveling in the depths of the jungle in Africa and you come across a large anaconda snake, that is a normal fear. You find a way to get out of there that motivates you. But if you live in a high-rise apartment and you fear the snakes that are under your carpet, that is an abnormal fear. That will cause you mental anguish. Faith does not offer us an, illu an illusion that we will be fear free of fear uh, or exempt from the pain or the suffering or the trouble. Faith allows us the comfort to know that we are not alone. And I think it is through our consciousness of knowing that God within us, we can overcome our fears. There was a study I read this past week where they have found that hospital patients that are dealing with uh, life-threatening illness uh, were studied. And I think a professor from Case, Case, Western, Case Western University, Baylor and the University of Missouri, are studying these individuals. And what they found is that those individuals who had faith differed in their outcome of their illness as opposed to those who had no faith. Those who had no faith are those who had uh, or were blaming God or who had just walked away, had a diff more difficult time surviving their illness. People with faith did not feel that they were alone and that they had a greater chance of surviving their illness and of leaving the hospital and returning home. And I think of some of the medical situations that we've had with people in our church. We've had kidney transplant, liver transplant, heart transplant, and I keep thinking, what kind of fear did, did they have? I haven't been there, I don't want to be there, but I, that it has to be a fear where you have to turn somewhere and do some kind of thinking. And I'm sure they also cried out to Jesus in their moment.
I think our life's journey will continue with fears until we know that life is love and life is the love of life. Join with the inspiration of our divine creator. I sit sometimes, like I did this morning, and questioned, you know, just why am I existing? Why, what is my life about? And I decided that whatever happens to me or whatever has happened to me, it's just, that's life. And what I have to learn to love is the fact that I exist. So when I talk about the consciousness of knowing that God is within us, that's what I rely on. This morning on Channel 4 News, the CBS station, they featured uh, that little girl that we all remember who was running from the, from the bombing in Vietnam. She was a naked little girl running through, the, uh, running away from the bombing and she was burning, she had been burned. We, John and I watched that program this morning, it was rather moving because she now is 52 years later and she has gone through a great deal uh, of life steps and chapters in her life. But she said she had been discouraged because her, her thinking wasn't the best when she wanted to enter medical school. So she would sneak off to the library and she would try to read books. The one book that meant more to her than anything else was the New Testament. She found faith there and she has given her new uh, ability to deal with her fears because she was afraid she was, had been burned so badly that she was so ugly she would never experience the love of someone else, especially a husband. She now is married to a man uh, she met in Havana, Cuba, and uh, she is now, make a long story short, she's now doing research to help other burn victims and they're working on her body as well as part of the experiment. But I found it, it just sort of fit into what I was talking about today, about your fears and how you can rely on your faith to carry you through. And you may have to call sometimes on Jesus. You may have to pray to God to help you out of those situations. I think often about, uh, not often, but I have thought about uh, those Christians in Charleston, South Carolina at the AME Church, there, the mother church where the shooting occurred. And I think what a perfect example of Christians to show us what perfect love is about. I don't know if I could have handled that situation the way that they handled it with the forgiveness that they had in their hearts. I thought it was monumental myself and I think there probably isn't enough said about their uh, reaction to uh, all that occurred with that uh, Wednesday evening. I did find this particular scripture in 1 John chapter 4 and it said it says there is not fear in love perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love. I don't know if I'm there yet. I don't think I'm there yet. But I have to continue to try. I think what it also is saying to us is that faith can transform whatever despair we might have into, you know, a great breeze of hope. And if I had to if I have to endure some of the things that I know other people have to endure, I will, I will call on Jesus because I think Jesus calls us all from time to time. Jesus calls us over or over the tumult of life's wild, restless sea. Day by day, his voice is calling. He's saying, Christian, saying, Christian, follow me.